Hey, how are you doing? So today I've decided to show you how I build my beehive equipment. I use a national brood and then supers. I found that there are a few places that are fairly cheap on eBay and places like that, but I've also found it's a lot, lot cheaper to build your own. And I can do it quicker and it's probably a bit more fun. At the moment, it seems like it's really hard to get hold of beekeeping equipment. Maybe because there's been so many swarms after that really, really wet March and April and then suddenly May, certainly where we live here, has been absolutely amazing. So I think there's been quite a shortage and it's been hard to get hold of some of the supplies. Even before it was hard to get hold of them, because my bees have grown so quickly this spring and now into summer, I actually ended up making quite a few brood boxes and supers for myself so yeah i'm gonna take you through how i make them it's gonna be a bit of a different one to what you may have seen because what i'm gonna focus on is actually the dimensions and sort of the cutting list because how i cut wood is not of that interest to you guys plus i have to show you with all my safety gear on i have to clear a load of space so that my work area looks really neat and tidy which it never actually does and as soon as you put a camera you realize how like untidy it is so here's uh, the dimensions of the box you're creating and the cutting list go ahead and uh, get these cut before you continue if you've got a better way or you found a cheaper material or you found somewhere that you can get flat cedar really really cheap share it please comment let everyone know you know that us beekeepers are tight as they come drop a comment in the comments that's what the comment section's for. The first thing we're going to do is cut the top bar, which is the part where the frames are going to sit on. This piece is a 25mm by 38mm section, and it's going to have a 10mm by 15mm section cut out of it, as shown on my cutting plans. This for this I actually use a jig as you can see here, it makes it a lot easier, a lot quicker. I set the depth on the circular saw and then I cut maybe 10 or 20 in a row. I then change the depth on the circular saw, switch to the other jig and then do the second cut. find it a lot easier that way. You can also use a router, you can use a hand saw or you could use a chisel. All work just as well as one another. So now I've completed the first cut, it's time to do the second cut. I turn over the jig, I'll just check the piece of wood and make the adjustment to the circular saw. I can then go ahead and do the second cut and then remove the piece of wood that's left over. This will leave me with my L-shaped frame bracket. Now it's really important to get your sizes and dimensions right for these. Uh, the most important bit is to make sure that these batten frame bits match up exactly with the 18mm ply. If not, it leaves gaps along the edges where there's space, things like that. It, it's not good. This one's slightly too long. But that doesn't matter because we can actually cut it once it's joined so that it fits perfectly. All of them are oversized by 4mm so that it can be cut down to exact size. If you were more precise with your units, like using a table saw, or something like that, then you wouldn't need to do it this way. I just find, as I'm using a circular saw, find this the easiest way to do it. As long as the whole thing ends up approximately 460 mil square, or 46 centimeters square, that's the main thing. Making sure that these two pieces join up is really, really important. So in preparation for this, I actually cut the 35 degree angle on the batten on my table saw. Alternatively, you could use a hand saw or a circular saw. So to do this, I'm going to use my jig again with a circular saw and I'm going to put a one centimetre by one centimetre cut into the opposite side and bottom of where the 35 degree slant. Uh, check back on the slide. I'll show it now just quickly so you can see. So there we have it, our two lower pieces that have now got beat space. And we've got those two there, these two here. This is just my guide so that I can help remember. These are other ones to do. 
as I'm actually building a few of these today. But we'll put them aside for a minute and we'll move on. Now often when I make these, I don't use a hammer and pins anymore. I use a nail gun, tack gun. It's a lot easier. Um, makes doing my frames, makes doing these a lot easier. So the most important thing to line up on this is where the bar is going to go for inside the hive. It all makes sense in the end. So what we want to do, put some glue on that edge, plenty of glue, doesn't matter if it squeezes out, washes over or anything like that, that's all good. Okay, we're also gonna want the bottom bit on, so that's gonna be on like that, that'll be on like that. So for this, we are. Uh, it's better if you've got flat surface, but it's too dark inside for me to show you this there. So I'm doing it all out here. This here, I'm gonna to do to this edge, which means this goes to this edge. important this bit here level with that makes it a nice box shape fits on no problems then so I always put 30 mil nails in the tack gun for this just embeds a bit better you can also use the staples as well they work really well right so I normally rub the bit of glue in the join if I can and then clean it up the glue I'm using, the bottles left over from a Thorns purchase I made a while ago and I just fill it up um, with a waterproof glue, uh, I think it's D3 or D4, um, as long as it's an external waterproof glue it will work fine. Obviously you make two of these up but what they're going to do is they're going to end up joining to that. You can now see why it's really really important to have a nice clean contact. I'm going to make up the second one of this really quickly and then we're going to go and cut it down to size. Always make sure the top bit's level first, that's the main thing. Level on this corner and level on that top corner. Then put your first tack in. Right, that's all level along the top. Right, I'm going to go and cut these to size. Back in a moment. So I've cut these down. Basically what I did, I went to my sliding miter saw, put it down, put it right to level where I'd get a cut on both and cut it down. And it gives me the perfect size. So the next stage, is to attach these bits. Nice amount of glue. So it's all about just getting one corner done first. Some people do choose to screw these together, that's fine, that's up to you guys. Um, it does make for them holding together better to start with, but depending what screws you use, they do rust out as well. Use like a decking screw or something like that, probably be a lot easier.
Now it's a case of letting that dry. I would recommend doing sort of a Ron Seal wood stain protection all over this. Not on the inside, but all on the outside. Certainly on these edges, take an hour or so to dry. You can see wherever you've had the glue, it just repels the water. This is why I wash them after I've done the Ron Seal with a, a watered down solution of the PVA glue. It just seems to help repel the water. What you will find is that these sit so that at the moment you've got top space for the bees. However, if you get some runners on here, metal ones, that will take it to bottom space. I use bottom space on mine, but I make them with this top space because it means I can put the runner and I can adjust the height for any sort of variation in what I do. Also, a few of my old hive bits do use um, top space. So where they use top space, I just don't have to use a runner and I can just adjust it. You can get the metal runners from a place called beehivebits.co.uk. They're the cheapest place I've found by far. Um, the company's run by a guy called Nick, who's always very good if you've got any questions or anything like that. But they make um, anything metal really for your beehive that you need. So the castellation tops, the runner tops, actual roofs for the beehives. They're next to nothing compared with, well, I, I couldn't make them cheaper myself if I bought the materials. Um, and they do them for nukes and normal ones. A lot of what I'm making is supers, so you use exactly the same process, but these are just smaller. You can also make a nuke, and depending on when you want six frame or five frame, it's kind of like this, literally just cut in half with another one of them stuck on each. Now, these are a fair bit heavier than a cedar hive, but they're a lot cheaper. At the moment with all the swarms and people not being able to have enough kit, get enough kit, I just thought I'll stick this up. This is what I do anyway. It's not the most interesting thing, but it might save you a lot of money. And you can knock one together in maybe an hour. It's easier to knock 10 together in two hours. But Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope it's helped. Uh, leave any comments for me, any improvements. Um, you can tell me that I'm not wearing steel toe cap boots for cutting wood. For now though, that's perfect for me. Um, and I will leave that out to dry. Right, thanks.